Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be making the ultimate Raspberry Pi setup, which can be used for lots of different uses, such as a web server or a game server, for example. So for the hardware for this setup, first of all, we have got the actual Raspberry Pi itself, as long as a heatsink case and two fans, which will allow us to overclock it later without running into any heating issues. We've then got the Ethernet cable, of course, because Ethernet is a lot faster than Wi-Fi, which is especially important when you're running something such as a web server. An Ethernet connection is also a lot more stable than regular Wi-Fi, and a lot more consistent speed, and you have much lower latency, which is especially good for something such as a web server, like I said before. So then we've got this USB flash drive, which we're going to be using for the as a boot drive, basically for the Raspberry Pi. It should be a bit faster than the micro SD card, hopefully. Although I'm not sure how well this USB drive actually works because it's quite old and I think it's about reliable. So hopefully, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So now I've got this 2 terabyte hard drive which can be used for extra storage such as databases or videos or some network attached storage server or lots of different uses just for lots of extra storage. But it should be quite helpful for a lot of different applications. Most parts used in this video will have a link in the description. I then installed Raspberry OS onto the USB stick, which I eventually got to work after a few hours and having to switch to a different USB drive. For some reason, when I connected to the Raspberry Pi with the VNC server, it would be really slow and really laggy, even literally just opening the program menu, because of a bug in one of the drivers, which I managed to fix by following this tutorial on the Raspberry Pi forums and manually setting the headless resolution of the Raspberry Pi. Overclocking the Raspberry Pi is really easy because all you need to do is just change these two lines in the config.txt file. Although for overclocking you can't just use passive cooling such as a heatsink, you need to have some sort of active cooling such as a fan. I then install log to ram on the Raspberry Pi, which is software that stops your SD card from wearing down as much by writing logs to memory instead of the SD card, and then occasionally writing them all at once to the SD card, which minimizes writes to the SD card. But I'm not too sure if I actually need it, since I'm using a USB drive, and not a micro SD card. But I'm pretty sure they both use flash memory or something, so I might need it. One downside of it is that it'll make it so you lose your log files if the Raspberry Pi crashes without properly shutting down, like such that you lose power. But it shouldn't be a problem because I'm going to be running the Raspberry Pi off of a solar panel, so it shouldn't lose power. Also, speak of micro SD cards, I also found out there's apparently a built in micro SD card test software on the Raspberry Pi, which I actually found by accident while looking through the program menu. And when I ran it, it actually failed, and it said that the USB drive I'm using is too slow for adequate performance although since i've already set everything up i'm just going to continue using it and hopefully it won't be too big of a problem i then set up my router in a place to be more accessible for the raspberry pi where i was going to eventually put it which would allow easy ethernet access while we're also having the raspberry pi where it needs to be for the solar power i then set up a static local ip address for the raspberry pi which I did by setting a reserved IP address for the Raspberry Pi's MAC address in my router's settings, which will make sure that the Raspberry Pi always gets the same local IP address which you use to connect to it, which is important for a lot of different applications such as a web server or anything you need to connect to the Raspberry Pi for, even if it's a simple SSH connection. I also then disabled Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the Raspberry Pi to save power because I wasn't using them, although I may use Bluetooth in the future, in which case I can just re-enable it. So then I installed Docker on the Raspberry Pi, and if you don't know what Docker is, it's basically a software that allows you to run containers with code inside it. I don't really understand it properly, so I can't really explain it. I don't really know much about it while I was installing it, but it will be helpful for when I'm running like lots of small processes on the Raspberry Pi, because you can see the status of each different process, which is quite helpful, especially with some of the things I want to be running, like lots of small processes, which you can also limit the memory of, so you can make sure you allocate enough memory for different processes. 
or allocate a small amount of memory to a small processor, which is very helpful for efficiently running lots of different processes. There's a link in the description on the guide to how to install Docker on the Raspberry Pi, if you want to install it yourself. Once Docker had finally finished installing, I ran a test Hello World Docker container to test it working, and I managed to run it successfully, which means that everything was installed and set up correctly. I then installed Portainer, which is a Docker container dashboard, which allows you to manage all of your different Docker containers in one place, as well as see the status of all of them, and allows you to easily manage all of them, change the settings. It's very helpful, especially when you've got lots of different containers running, and it's hosted on the Raspberry Pi as a web server, so you remotely connect to it from your computer, so you don't need to even go use the Raspberry Pi. You can just connect to it from a web browser and then manage all your containers. It's actually really easy to install because it's actually a Docker container itself, which allows you to easily install it on the command line using Docker by just putting the image, and then you just use one more command to start it. And then you can get it to automatically run every single time the Raspberry Pi turns on. Once it finished installing, I opened up the dashboard and made it an admin account to log in with. I then opened up the container view, but it showed two containers, one being Portainer, the dashboard, which is currently running, and the other being the Hello World container I downloaded earlier, which wasn't running currently, but showed that everything was working correctly. I then set up and connected the USB-C power cable, which is running off the solar panel, using a 5 volt step-down converter, allowing it to run off of USB. The solar panel is set up uses a solar power controller, solar panel and a battery, which will connect it together, so it's very easy to be used. The voltage is set down from 12 volts from the controller to 5 volts, which is what you need to power the Raspberry Pi from USB. So this is an Arduino circuit I've built, which connects to the Raspberry Pi, which can display lots of different lots of different system stats, such as a bar indicator that can show the amount of storage left on the hard drive, a number pad which can be used to control different parts of the Arduino circuit and the Raspberry Pi, and an LCD screen which can be used to display lots of different information, such as the current CPU temperature and also the power draw and many other imp important stats. To make this circuit, it took me about four hours for decoding, which isn't too bad when you're programming microcontrollers like an Arduino, because sometimes it can be very hard to do, it can take a very long time. All of the wiring and the electronics also took quite a while, quite a bit longer than the coding did, because all the wires have to be in the exact right place. It was very hard to debug as well, although I know basically nothing about electronics, but luckily I managed to make it without too much difficulty. Then created a Python program for the Raspberry Pi, which would send the data to the Arduino over serial, which is what you use to communicate with the Arduino, which I did was making a basic loop, which every 10 seconds would get the current CPU temperature sent over serial to the Arduino. It was created a system on the Arduino. They send a specific keyword for a number so that the Arduino knows what that number's for. For example, CPU temp 30, which means CPU temperature 30, and lots of other different commands. I also wanted to send the amount of milliamps being used by the Raspberry Pi, but unfortunately there's no way of finding out the amount of electricity currently being used by the Raspberry Pi. I also wanted it to show the amount of Docker containers running, but it was very complex and I couldn't get it to work unfortunately. I also made the program run as a Docker container, which took me quite a while to work out how to do, as I knew nothing about how to make anything with Docker. Let's even do complicated stuff such as access a serial port via Docker. But I did eventually get it to work after a while and a lot of attempts. And it actually looks really good and works perfectly. I also then set up a 2 terabyte hard drive which can be used for lots of storage in the Raspberry Pi. So now I've shown everything I set up, here's a few ways this setup could be improved. First of all, you could have an SSD for the boot drive, which would allow the Raspberry Pi to boot faster and run faster in general. And then you could also have a better fans, a quieter, and or water cooling. But that's very, that is really overkill for Raspberry Pi. Another one is 3D printed enclosures to organise all the components used, such as all the Arduinos and the Raspberry Pi itself. And finally, you can add a few more features to the Arduino, because there's a lot of unused features that I added. But anyway, thanks for watching, and goodbye.